Okay, thank you. Um, what I'm going to talk about in this presentation is uh, some of the information out there with regards to the impact that incubation temperature has upon uh, the development embryo and also upon the uh, performance of birds out in the field. And I'd also like to acknowledge uh, Edgar Oviedo, who happens to be Colombian, uh, was a collaborator in, in much of this work, along with Vern Christensen. Okay. Quality of the hatchling, my way of thinking, is going to depend a, a large part on how the embryo is allowed to utilize the nutrients that the hen puts into the egg. Uh, that's what incubation does. It manages the availability of nutrients for the developing embryo. We know that poor incubation uh, environment is going to reduce hatch and performance out in the field. We know that we've shown that it can alter their energy metabolism, it alters thyroid metabolism, it alters intestinal development, it alters cardiac function, muscle development, and bone and tendon development. Uh, when we think about incubator temperature, we got to think what's the real temperature that the embryo is developing at? Is it the set point of, of the incubator or is it really the embryo temperature? And of course the answer is embryo temperature. Uh, remembering that you know these, these sensors for temperature in these machines is not normally where the, uh, the eggs are. I won't make that comment. Uh, Okay, so what influences uh, temperature of the embryo? Well, obviously it's going to be the set point that, uh, that you have the ear incubator set at. The other thing that's going to influence it tremendously is going to be the airflow that goes through the air egg mass, okay? Uh, we know that uh, turning, what angle you have it turned at can influence uh, the airflow and in turn is going to influence uh, the temperature of the eggs. We know that fan uh, RPMs, uh, or how much CFMs you're moving through uh, by the fan is going to have an impact. Uh, we know that the amount of air that your damper is letting into the machine is going to have an impact upon temperature. We know your room, room conditions can. If you have environmentally controlled rooms that your machines are in, you know that how you run your environment in your setter halls and in your hatcher halls is going to impact how your machine runs and in, in turn it will impact then the development of the embryo. The, when it comes to incubation, all we want the machines to do, the incubators to do, is to fine tune. We don't want them to do anything more than that because if we do then we start to see a lot of fluctuations occurring. Then the other thing that will influence uh, temperature of the embryos uh, it's been shown there's some differences, of course, with breeds. Now, you know there's four parameters to, to incubation. Temperature, ventilation, humidity, and turning. And most of the time when I go out in the field to, to solve problems, and that's, that's what my job is back at the university, is to, to problem solving in education. Uh, it's, it's not simply one parameter that's necessarily causing a particular problem. Uh, a lot of times it, it might show up as one particular parameter, but it's being influenced by another parameter. Okay, we also have to, as hatchery people, we have to know the complete process. We have to know what is normal. If we don't know what is normal, we don't know what is abnormal. Okay? We have to know how the, our incubator environments are affecting proper development. And we have to know, as I sort of mentioned earlier, we have to know our room environments and how they have affect the operation of our incubators. Okay, this is a turkey egg. It's not a chicken egg. But what I'm getting at, because I told you, incubation for me is all about managing the nutrients that are available to the embryo. Okay, we've got, of course, our yolk yolk nutrients, we've got our nutrients in the albumin, we've got our nutrients in the, in the shell. And then the only outside nutrient that we really have to, have to supply to the developing embryo, of course, would be the oxygen. And then our byproducts of metabolism will be carbon dioxide and water vapor. And of course, 